and we're using Scrum. No. <laughs> exactly. No, you can't have it right now. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Real Agile or BS. I'm Peter Saddington with Bob Hartman. And we love to answer your frequently asked questions around Agile. And today we have an interesting one, gaps between sprints. And so this is something that I've heard of a couple, a couple of times before, but to be quite honest, it doesn't come that up that much in my world. Um, and so gaps between sprints, I'm assuming, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, Bob, but gaps between sprints are that we do our sprint and then we might have a week or a couple of days or maybe another time box between uh, when we engage in another sprint. And so in many ways, I can immediately kind of rising up in my gut here, think that this is a lot of BS, but help me understand some of the context here, Bob, because this is one of your suggestions. <laughs> so here's the question I get, Peter. And so I'll, I'll, and then I'll throw it back to you for your answer, which will be a little different format for us. But so the question comes up this way. Hey, we're working hard in the sprint. We just did our sprint review. We just did our sprint retrospective. Shouldn't we be changing things and have time to implement some things as part of those changes before we start our next sprint planning in the morning? So what do you tell a team like that? I mean, they literally, at the end of one day, they're doing sprint review and sprint retrospective. Those imply like our backlog should change, things like that. But we have to do sprint planning tomorrow morning at night. What do we do? Well, this. The I can give you the answer is you just keep on going. <laughs> and we have enough ceremonies like sprint planning, like backlog refinement. Uh, we have enough ceremonies to be able to cover for opportunities for that improvement. I, I, I guess where, where, I'm, where I'm coming from is that we, wouldn't, we don't want to stop the train. Whenever, whenever I hear gap, the, I guess what's rising in my gut, gut right now is like gaps uh, between sprints is I'm thinking that you're, you're going to be just focusing on process improvement rather than actually doing work. And one of the whole ideas of sprinting is that we're constantly providing value or creating value that can be deployed to our users, our customers, our end users, et cetera. And so I think what we, what this might be lie is an opportunity to discuss capacity and saying, Hey, maybe we need to lower the amount of work that we do in terms of story points or a number of stories so that we can have margin to actually improve the processes. Um, I, just, I just don't feel like it's a good idea to stop the train uh, because we lose momentum, people get recontextualized to different things. Uh, and it can, it can, in my opinion, can, it can very much slow down uh, productivity or efficiency. Uh, efficiency is probably a better word here um, and effectiveness of actually getting the work done. And so, uh, I think it would be, it would, we would need to have a conversation around margin and capacity with the team to make sure that we do have that time to improve the processes and improve the way that we do work and not slow the train down of actual development work. So what would, what would you suggest for a team that they just did their sprint review um, and, and their, their stakeholders said, hey, we love everything you've got and these three things should be next, and they are nowhere on their backlog currently. How, how would you tell them to handle that? Because tomorrow morning at nine, they're doing sprint planning with a backlog that may or may not match what the stakeholders just asked them to do. So how do they handle that situation? Well, the backlog is your repository. I like to call it your repository for all things good and all the changes necessary in the project. And so the stakeholders would have to work with the product owner uh, to input and create user stories for those so that we can sufficiently understand the context, number one, and number two, break them down into tasks or subtasks so that we can understand how to actually deploy it and work on it. So we could certainly do this during sprint planning. Ideally, uh, this would be hopefully something that we could have time to refine. Uh, but another conversation that might need to be had, and I'm okay with this as well, is saying that, hey, we will put these in the product backlog, stakeholders with the product owner do that, but it might not be the thing that we need to do absolutely next. It could be something that we could refine during this sprint and we could commit to it in the next sprint. And so there might be a little bit of a delay there for them. Now, if they're highly, you know, they're highly influential and they're pushing us to do it, then in many ways, we might spend the beginnings or the early beginnings of our sprint planning uh, functionally decomposing those ideas into smaller stories so that we can understand them and execute against them. But I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I don't see an, an, a place where, where we would want to force the team to spend time 
uh, breaking down these ideas that are non-contextual to the actual work that we've already done. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. And I agree with you. I think every time I think this question comes up, I say, no, there are no gaps between sprints. And when they ask, well, how do we do these things? I say, well, yeah, you either do it during sprint planning or the, the product owner works a little harder at the end of the sprint to make sure that it's ready for sprint planning. But it's it's got the cadence is really important. It's a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if your heart stopped for a second, you wouldn't feel so good. So <laughs> let's have the team have a heartbeat that just keeps going and going and going. And that will that will help the team have a have a better idea of how they're doing. Now, on the other hand, when it comes to gaps, there is one gap that I do kind of like, and that's people who have started to do uh, more quarterly type of stuff. And they do six two week sprints and then have a week to uh, invest in themselves. So they invest in their their backlog, they invest in their process improvement, they invest in everything. And so I like that cadence because every quarter, we have six sprints and a one week period that's devoted to improvement of, of what we're doing. And that that's a cadence I've learned to like. There's a couple of companies doing that now that are clients of mine. And I, I've really, I didn't think I would like it, but I'm liking it a lot. I can appreciate that. One of the things that I, in our product owner course that I, I talk about is, is product owners being assertive to stakeholders and always being able to have the option of saying, no, we can't have that right now. Can you wait a sprint with the caveat and the context of, hey, we're not doing waterfall anymore. You're not gonna have to wait five months for this change. You might just have to wait a couple of weeks. And so I find that to be a great way to engage with stakeholders to say, hey, I know that you have this idea. I know that you want this done as soon as possible. Yes, yes, yes. It's a good thing that we're using Scrum. No. Exactly. No, you can't have it right now. You can't inject that random, random change right now. But again, and this is kind of the way to kind of buffer that no, is it's a good thing we're working with Scrum, which means you'll get it in two weeks instead of two months or two years. And so can we, can you give us uh, the opportunity to break stuff down, to refine it effectively, prioritize it, uh, maybe do some value evaluation of it so that we can have it as the next highest priorities in the next spring. And I, I often find from the feedback that I've gotten with the product owners who are working with stakeholders that that's a great way to go. It's not that we're, we are saying no, but we're not saying no in months, you know, for months. It's no, you'll get it in the next couple of sprints. I, like yeah, I actually button. tell people saying no is a bad idea. Saying no and giving them options is a great idea because that's a conversation. No is not a conversation. No is you basically being standoffish and no with options says I'm open to talk about any of these options, but what you're requesting is not actually possible. So let's talk about what is possible. Absolutely. So, you know, that that's one of those wording changes I think that that scrum masters and product owners can make for their teams and really have a have a positive influence on things rather than being the naysayers, they're the negotiators. Absolutely. I really like that. So I think we're in agreement here, Bob and myself, that having a gap uh, between sprints is probably not the best way to go. Uh, I can, I actually, I remember research actually, and this will be the last thing I say on it, but I remember seeing research on the momentum of sports teams and kind of the psychology behind that. And the TLDR, the took too long, did not read uh, results were, is that when you have a sports team that has momentum, they're, con they're winning, they have, the they have that momentum going for them, the team is in the zone, they're in flow, you don't want to interrupt that. You don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to break that flow. And so likewise with software development teams, one of the great things about sprints is that we're, we have a consistent cadence to our development. Don't break that flow let them continue on. Now, again, you might have might, might need to have conversations around margin so that we can effectively improve that which we do. But again, the cadences, there's value to that uh, in terms of human behavior and human psychology. So we'll leave it there. So it is BS. Guys, don't do gaps unless, I, do, I, I like this idea, the six-week sprints and one week, one week to improve stuff. I might, uh, I might steal that from you, Bob. I think that's a great op option. Uh, for teams that are that are working uh, consistently on hard, hard, complex work. So everyone out there, thanks so much for joining us in this episode of Real Agile or BS. Let us know in the comments below your ideas. Obviously, smash the like button, share it out, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.